Hello, today we're gonna to cover Hibachi RF microneedling. My name is Marie Tice. I am a registered nurse and I work as a clinical trainer for Aesthetics Biomedical. The Vivachi is FDA cleared. And so while we're going through the PowerPoint, we'll only stick with uh, on-label uses. So with our FDA approval, we're approved to treat facial wrinkles. And we're also approved for Fitzpatrick type one through five. So how are, are we treating those wrinkles? Well, we're taking uh, microneedles and we're puncturing them into the skin that's causing trauma, but we're also adding the component of radio frequency. So what is radio frequency? Essentially, it is heat, right? Heat is your magic in this product. So what we do is uh, we take an electrical current. It is a bipolar current. That means you don't have to ground the patient. And wherever we put that heat is where it's going to stay, um, and it'll feed back up through the needles. So um, again, heat, heat is what's really going to remodel the, the dermis. So one way to look at it is if I had straight hair and I wanted to make it curly, how would I do that? Well, I probably take out a curling iron, I plug it into the wall, I turn it on, that barrel would heat up. And now I'm able to wrap my hair around that uh, curling iron and it's gonna turn my hair into curly hair, right? So we're doing the same thing with the dermis. We're going in, we're puncturing the skin, we're laying down a layer of heat. Um, and that's, again, what's gonna remodel, uh, it's gonna start the healing process, it's gonna uh, you know, trigger all these uh, healing responses and that's what leads to that youthful, uh, tighter skin. So before we get too far into it, let's just go ahead and say, who is not a candidate for this? So the two absolute no-nos are anybody who's pregnant or breastfeeding, and then anybody with a pacemaker or defibrillator. Everybody else is really just a consideration, but if you're ever unsure, check with your medical director or have your patient get signed off by their primary care physician. So some people who might not be great candidates is somebody with anything artificial in the area, whether it's artificial bones, silicone, collagen, metal, um, I personally haven't had any problems, uh, but just know they might not be a great candidate. And then patients with mental disorders, any kind of active uh, cancer going on. So if they have any kind of malignant tumors uh, currently on chemotherapy or radiation, want to wait till they finish out that treatment uh, before you do the babachi. And then anybody with delayed wound healing. So renal failure, uncontrolled diabetes, severe hypertension, cardiovascular disease, history of stroke, any kind of active infection, bleeding disorders, history of keloid scarring, again, might not be a great candidate. And then if they have a lidocaine, tetracaine, or benzocaine allergy, uh, again, not a great candidate because we do recommend that you know for this procedure. So some other considerations, anything that is active uh, going on, again, we wanna wait till that clears up. So if they have any kind of bacterial, viral, or fungal infection, we need to wait till that heals. If they have any kind of outbreak on the skin, whether it's eczema, psoriasis, dermatitis, um, rosacea, we wanna wait till that clears up. All right, so some other considerations, if they have any kind of cardiac uh, disease, any kind of bleeding disorders on hormone replacement, uh, anything raised or suspicious looking, don't want to go over that. If they have skin cancer, uh, if they have an active sunburn, don't want to go over tattoos, permanent makeup, facial hair. Um, if they have any kind of erythema, we don't want to go over that. Uh, vascular lesions. And if they've been on Accutane within the last six months, need to wait till that uh, time has passed. Uh, also, don't want to use active ingredients seven days before or seven days after the treatment. And if they've had a chemical peel, if it's a light peel, you could do seven days. But if it's a more aggressive peel, you want to wait like 14 days for that. All right. So when they come in, we always want to get a consent. Uh, have your patient come in with a clean face. We want to numb them for at least 30 minutes. We do recommend a BLT cream of a 20, 10, and 10. Now, this is not a sterile procedure, but it is a clean procedure. So you want to be wearing gloves and a mask. And then you want to remove the numbing cream and you want to do two passes with rubbing alcohol. Your first pass decreases the skin. Your second pass is your antimicrobial pass. 
All right, so it takes about an hour to do the procedure itself. So you wanna find a way to hold the handpiece where you're making full contact with the skin. You don't need a lot of pressure on there, uh, minimal pressure, right? Um, so just find a way to, to hold it that is comfortable for you because again, you're gonna be doing this for about an hour. All right, so when we get started, when we look at our patients, we gotta decide are we gonna do two passes or three passes? So two passes is prevention and maintenance. So everybody gets two passes. And then your third pass, you'll spot treat. So areas of progression. So uh, typically that's gonna be around the eyes, around the mouth, jowling or the neck. And then we wanna do a tight, tight overlap. So we want 50% overlap. So for your first pass, you're gonna fire that hand piece between four to 600 times. On your second pass, you'll be at eight to 1200. And I'll show you where you'll find that uh, in just a minute. So what we wanna do is we wanna start on the temple and we wanna do our test spot. And so we're gonna look for our clinical endpoints. Our clinical endpoints are mild to moderate erythema. Don't wanna see a pattern. Don't wanna see pinpoint bleeding. Um, because truly, if we're cauterizing the tissue, you should not see any pinpoint bleeding. So um, then I also check with patient tolerability. I give a zero to five pain scale. You can use whatever pain scale you want to, but zero to five, if they get to a three, I want to readjust. So we'll talk about our depths real quick, and then we'll talk about our pattern. So I like to divide the face up into two areas, shallow and deep. So your shallow areas are going to be your temples, forehead, around the eyes, nose, upper lip, and chin. Your deep areas are gonna be your cheeks and then your submental area. So typically what I would do uh, for the shallow area, your range is 0.06 to 1.2 millimeters. For your deep area, uh, the range is 1.0 to 2.0. So typically I start at a 1.0 on the temple. I test, make sure everything's good. And then I just have to worry about adjusting my setting. So typically I'll do a 1.0 throughout. And then I come to the cheeks and I dial in a 2.0 for my depth. Do the other cheek, that first pass is done. Now on my second pass, I wanna come up a little bit more superficial. So then I come back to the temple, I'll do a 0 0.08. Again, snake that through, come through the eyes, do the nose, upper lip and chin. Now I did a 2.0 on the cheek. Now I'm gonna to come to a 1.5. So 1.5, 1.5 throughout the cheeks. And so let's say today my patient's area of concern is jowling. So then I'll come and do a 1.0 on the jawline, right? So just remember our first pass is gonna be our deepest pass as far as the depth. And then we wanna come up a little bit more superficial each time. Now, um, the reason why we do the pass the way that we do it versus regular microneedling where you're doing all three passes at one time, like in an area, is because of that heat component. You uh, really need to give the skin a minute to um, diffuse that heat. So this slide shows you the heat at one second versus 10 seconds. You can see it hasn't moved very much. So we want to give the skin just a little bit of time to react. And that heat does build throughout the treatment. All right, so um, the when you're when you're doing your treatment again, it's a bipolar current. You can control the depths, and we're just laying an even layer of heat throughout the um, throughout the dermis. So what I've described on that other side, as far as your depths, that's our three D precision approach. So I like to think of it as I'm building a channel. So we cauterize that tissue, we come up, we're building these channels. And then once we're done, then we're gonna fill um, those channels with something. So today we're gonna do the Vavachi Experience Kits and we're gonna put that Soothe Serum on. And that's what's really gonna make your client look um, dewy, hydrated the next day. So let's talk about the machine itself. It's small, it's compact. It's really nice if you have a small space, it's easy to sew away. 
And then it's uh, completely customizable for each client, which is nice. And then you have 31 different levels to you. So the range goes from 0.5 to 3.5, and it moves at a 0.1 uh, increments. It's got a robotic hand piece. It's got 36 gold-plated needles. And then you have the option to use a 1 megahertz or 2 megahertz. And then it has an ABC screen. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to plug the machine in. You're going to flip the switch on. The blue light will illuminate. And then you're ready to rock. It's that simple. So if for some reason your machine doesn't turn on, just make sure your emergency switch isn't pressed in. If it is, you're just going to turn it out and turn it clockwise. So this is a class four device. There's no key to lock it up like a laser. Um, so just keep that in mind. There's no key for it. And that's that. All right. So you have two screens to use. You have your standby screen and then you have your ready screen. So on your ready screen, you'll actually be able to fire the hand piece. And then it'll have a a picture of the dermis. Now, this is not your client's dermis, but it is a good reference point. So wherever those red dots kind of correlate and let you know where you're at in the dermis. So here we're at 3.5. You can see we're hitting that subcutaneous layer, right? So if you're ever wondering like, where do I want to hit in the dermis? You can refer to those dots. All right, so here we have our standby screen. At the very top, you have your P1 through P4. If you have like a setting that you'd love to use, you could program it in and select that. That way you don't have to dial in your settings. Now in the middle, we have our diode color. The diode colored, uh, we have red and blue. Red is associated with collagen production. Blue is associated with antimicrobial properties. Then we have our frequency. We have the one megahertz and then the two megahertz. The one megahertz is stronger than the two. And we'll talk about the two megahertz in just a moment, uh, but we recommend all treatments to be done in the one megahertz. Then you have your switch. You have the option to use a foot pedal or a hand piece. I personally find the hand piece just a little bit easier to operate, but if you're laser savvy and find the foot pedal easier, you're more than welcome to do so. All right, so now on the bottom, this is where we're gonna put in all of our settings. So uh, here we have our level. This is our heat. This number ranges from one to 10. So uh, you'll, we'll only be using four, five, and six for now. So let's say I wanted to boil some water on the stove. Well, six would be my height heat setting. So that would be a six. Five would be like a medium high, four would be a medium. And then we already covered depth, so we'll skip that box for now. And then we have our RF time. How long are those needles in the skin for? So this number ranges from 100 milliseconds to 800 milliseconds. At 500 milliseconds, we're at a half a second. So anything over is just over half a second. And then anything under is just under half a second. And then this fourth little box shots, that's how many times you fire that hand piece. Again, per pass, I wanna fire the hand piece four to 600 times. All right, so now we'll talk about our settings. So um, here's our four, five, and six. And then we have our pulse duration. I like to call this my recipe card. So I'm either going to go up my card or I'm going to go down my card. So six and 600 is your max settings. Not many people are going to be able to tolerate that. Um, not to say you never would, but those are going to be your outliers. And then four and 600 is our lowest settings. And then five and 500 is just like a medium, hot, fast setting. And this is what we're going to do for every client every time. This is where we're going to start. And again, we're either going to move up the card or we're going to move down the card. So I'll give you a couple examples of how we'll do that. But first, I just want to um, talk about a crock pot, right? So I feel like this kind of helps when you're trying to adjust your temperature and your time. So let's say we have a pot roast. We can cook it on high for four hours or we can cook it on low for eight hours. So the concept with this is if I go up in my heat, I don't need to leave those needles in quite as long. But if I go down on my heat, I have to make up for that energy. So I got to extend the time those needles are in the skin. So now let's go over these uh, examples here. So let's say I do a five and 500 on my test spot and the skin does not react at all. And then I check in with the client and say, hey, how does it feel? 
zero to five and they give me a zero. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up on the card. So then I'll do a five and 600. Again, I'll just build off that test spot, see where they're at, look for mild to moderate erythema, check in with them. They still are pretty comfortable. They're not really feeling it. So then I'll do a five and 700. So then I see some mild erythema, right? And then I say, hey, zero to five. Does that feel any different? Tell me what you're feeling. And I say, oh, I feel it. I feel the heat now, uh, but it's, it's pretty comfortable. I'd say a one and a half. Perfect. So then I'm going to complete my pass. And then all I have to do is worry about adjusting my depths, right? Um, so now let's do the opposite. So now let's say I do a five and 500 and the skin gets super reactive. And I say, hey, zero to five, how does that feel? They say, it's a four. It's it's pretty painful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower my heat. But because I lowered my heat, I got to extend the time. So then I'm going to go from a 500 milliseconds to a 800 milliseconds. And then again, I'll just build off that test spot. And I say, hey, how does that feel? Um, and they say, oh, that feels better. I would say it's a two. Perfect. So that's their happy place. Again, I'll just complete out my pass and adjust my adepts when I need to. So um, sometimes on that second pass, you will have to readjust your settings and that's okay. Again, I want to make sure this skin is still reacting the way I want it to. Uh, once I do that pass, it should just look like they have a sunburn. Again, I don't want to see a pattern. I don't want to see a grid mark. I don't want to see any pinpoint bleeding. And I want cut patient tolerability throughout. Uh, so now let's look at this third column. This is your joules per shot. So at five and 500, this is actually the least amount of energy I'm putting into the skin. And that's Ideally, why I want to either move them up to a five and 700 or a four and 800. I want to maximize the energy that I can get into the skin because that's going to um, lead to a better long term result if I can get more energy into that skin, right? So if I can on my second pass, keep them at a four and 800, I do. But if I have to readjust because it's been 30 minutes and numbing cream's wearing off, we're going a little bit more superficial. Um, I will then go to like a four and 700, just check, make sure they're doing okay. And if I have to, then I go to a four and 600. So let's say now you're at a four and 600 and the, the, the skin's really reactive and your patient's saying it's painful, it's not tolerable. Well, that's when you could go into a two megahertz. So, the one is stronger, it's got a stronger wavelength. And uh, when we did our FDA study, uh, we submitted everything in a one megahertz. So the, the two is off label, but I do wanna talk about it just a little bit. So when you go into a two megahertz, you cut that energy in half. So it's just not as powerful. So this is gonna be more for people who are looking for a prejuvenation, right? They're younger, they really, uh, don't have any laxity or anything like that. They might be there for something else like scarring or something like that. I would use a two megahertz in that situation. Or you have an older client with thin, creepy skin. Their skin just physically cannot uh, handle all that energy. Go into a two megahertz for that. Or somebody who's really sensitive, right? So um, I always like to give the example of an 18 gauge and a 25 gauge needle, right? So if I come into the doctor's office, right? And I, you ask me, uh, hey, you're gonna get a flu shot. What size needle do you want? The 18 gauge or the 25 gauge needle? Well, if I'm a lay person, I don't know anything. I'm gonna pick the 18 gauge needle. And it's like, no, pick the 25, pick the lesser one, right? <laughs> so just know that two does not mean double, it means cut in half. All right, so the needle sets themselves are sterile. Um, they have a shelf life of three years. They are a one and done. You cannot uh, sterilize these needles or put them in barbicide. Uh, and you wouldn't want to do that for a patient anyways, because you wouldn't want to cross contaminate. So the cartridge itself, the needles are surgical grade stainless steel, and then they're gold plated. Again, it's a single use cartridge. The handpiece is robotic, so it's a soothe insertion point. Most of the time people tell me uh, it feels like one needle going in or they just feel the heat. 
and then the death range is 0.5 to 3.5. So here on this picture, uh, the top portion of the needles are insulated. The bottom down here is where it's non-insulated, so you can really control where that heat goes. All right, so when you open the package, just make sure the needles are fully retracted. If they're not, you can tap it or you can, uh, with your gloved hand, just pull that, uh, that lever down. All right, and then when you go to put your, uh, your tip on, make sure your machine's on standby. You're gonna um, twist and line up the knocks, holding it upright, and you're gonna lock it into place. All right, so now we finished the Vivachi. Now we're gonna do the Vivachi Experience Kit. So we have the Boost Glide Serum. It's an HA serum, and it's got some added tripeptides to it. Uh, they will take the Boost Serum home with them, and that's all they're gonna use for the first day. Uh, again, this is what's really gonna make them look hydrated and dewy. Uh, and I want them to apply it every couple of hours after the treatment. And then we have the Soothe mask. I love this mask. So it's got that same serum, uh, but it's got licorice in it. And that's what's going to help cool down the skin afterwards. And it helps take down the redness. So we put it on for 20 minutes. Uh, again, you're going to pull that mask off and they're not even going to look like they've had a procedure done. So it's pretty cool. I love this mask. All right. So now let's talk about aftercare. So... As far as aftercare, again, they'll get that serum to take home with them. That's all they're going to use that first day. And I want them to wash their hands before they apply any of that serum. Uh, they can be red. They're, they can be red for four to 24 hours. Usually after four hours, though, the redness is gone. Uh, but their skin's healing. I don't want them to do any extreme heat uh, or exercise for 48 hours after the treatment. And then the next day, what they'll use is just a gentle wash and moisturizer. I want them to use sunscreen. They can use makeup, uh, but definitely want them using sunscreen for the next week. Uh, no direct sunlight for three days and no uh, hot tub saunas, anything like that. After seven days, they can go back to their normal skincare routine as far as any active ingredients. Okay, so let's talk about some undesired effects. So in this first picture, this is tracking. Now this was from excessive heat, right? So in this picture, they were using the heat level, um, I believe it was a seven and an eight. And so you can easily see where those, those tracks are, like where we entered the skin at. So just while you're doing the treatment, be aware, keep reading the skin, keep checking with patient tolerability. All right, in the second picture, this is track marks. So again, this is typically more of what it will look like, but you can see on the on the jawline, it just looks like they didn't have, it looks more technique to me. Um, you can see some right angles. So heat does not discriminate. So if you're coming in at an angle, some are gonna burn the dermis, some are gonna burn the epidermis. And if you're pulling that hand piece up while the light is still on, again, you're pulling that heat through the epidermis, you're gonna cause tracking. And then in the third picture, clean and dry. We don't wanna put down the boost serum and then try to microneedle that in because what can happen is you can burn the skin. And then anytime we do an aesthetics procedure, you run the risk of melia. Um, but those channels are open a little bit longer than regular microneedling. So regular microneedling, those channels are open for 15 minutes. With this, those channels are open for two to four hours. So um, I want them to go home. I, you know, again, wash your hands before they apply any serum. I want them to use a clean face mask if they're going to use a face mask. Uh, don't put cell phone or any anything up to their face. I don't want um, anybody touch them, touching them, right? Giving them kisses. I want them to use fresh towels, fresh pillowcase case the night of the procedure. And then every now and then you can get a delayed histamine response. Have them take it in a histamine. Um, and if it's the next day, they can put cortisone 10 on their skin. And that usually does clear up. Now, the thing with tracking, this does not show up during the procedure. Again, it'll show up two to three days later. Warn your patients, some it is a possibility it could happen. 
um, not to pick at it. Um, and then have them use a washcloth on day three to manually exfoliate their skin and it will resolve within seven days. Okay, clean and wipe down your machine in between uses. You can use any uh, any hospital grade cleaner, right? So you can use Catacide wipe, bleach wipes, anything like that. Um, just go by their recommendations as far as your dry time. All right, let's go over some frequently asked questions. So we do recommend a series of three to four, and then you're gonna space them out four to six weeks apart. Um, you'll get your max result six months after the treatment. Now, if they have more laxity or there for some kind of correction, whether it be scarring, uh, you might need to do more treatments, more like five to six. Uh, if you're doing any body work, it's gonna take more, more like five to six. And with your body, you want to space out those treatments just a little bit longer because the body doesn't heal as fast. So more like six to eight weeks. Um, and then recovery time is pretty quick as far as you just have really that one day. We like to give the skin a full seven days as far as any active ingredients or doing anything else to it. But by seven days, the skin's pretty much healed. Now the four to six weeks, uh, that's just the, you know, we're just starting the production of collagen. So that does take a little bit longer. So when you're talking to your clients, you're almost going to talk to them about um, almost like you would with Sculptra or you want to talk about this is exercise for the skin. It takes a little bit of time, right? So give it, give it some times and set that expectation as six months afterwards. Now we do recommend a numbing time at 30 minutes. The procedure itself takes about an hour and then 20 minutes for the mask. Now, some things you could do to speed it up is you can treat the neck. You don't have to numb for the neck, so you treat that while their face is numbing. You can also put the machine on automated. Uh, for that, you'll hold the trigger down for three seconds. You'll listen for a chime, and then the handpiece will fire automatically on its own, and that does help speed up the treatments. Now, you can treat a Fitzpatrick 6 that is off-label, and for that, we recommend on your recipe card, you treat them at a power level four with the RF time of four to 600. And then uh, you're just gonna go a little bit deeper with your depths. Um, typically your darker Fitzpatrick's have a little bit thicker of a skin. So you can go a little bit deeper. All right. All right, so let's see what the Vivachi can do. Uh, so this is from Dr. Tangetti. He's on our uh, our board of advisors. So it works really well for the dynamic lines, anything around the eyes, around the mouth it works well for. I love it for the neck too. It works great for the neck. All right. And we are best in class, I'm proud to say. We've been around for a little, like five years now, and we're still getting best in class. Okay, if you ever need help with um, marketing, we do have, uh, you are assigned a practice uh, marketing manager or practice development manager, and they can help you with your pricing and marketing. Okay, and then follow us on Instagram. We do have Instagram live series. And then if you would like to, you can text Vivachi to 39970. Um, with this, we send out Vivachi directs and they're just different things uh, from other providers, uh, their tips and tricks or just uh, things to help you with your Vivachi. It's a really great resource. All right, thank you so much. And then also, if you need to look up some technique videos, I do have a YouTube channel. It's Nurse Marie and Vivachi if you want to see some techniques. And then um, if you need any help with ordering or have any questions, please contact uh, the training assistants and we can set up a time to do a one-on-one -on -one call.